Building a full stack web application using Rust can sometimes make you feel a bit out of place. Let's see if we can make things feel a little more familiar. We have plenty of front end and back end frameworks to choose from, but how should we arrange and build a project that includes both a front end and a back end? And how should we package up our app to deploy to production? We'll cover both of those topics in this video. We're using U for the front end and Actix Web for the back end, but the same pattern should be applicable to other frameworks as well. If you'd like more specific details on the front end or the back end, I'll link videos for those topics in the description, but no need to watch those before this video. Our goal here is to have a setup where we can have a fast feedback loop when developing locally via hot reloading on the front end, but we want Actix Web to serve our static front end files when we build for production. Then we'll look at how to package our app into a Docker image that we can deploy to some cloud service or elsewhere. I've seen a few solutions floating around for packaging up a full stack Rust app for deployment to production, but I felt like there was a simpler way. This approach doesn't involve any make files, shell scripts, or reverse proxies. If you've been doing front end development in Rust, you probably already have these, but if you don't already, you'll need to install Wasm BindGen and Trunk. We're actually gonna create a cargo workspace that's gonna contain both our front end and back end crates. If your front end and back end right now are in separate directory structures, that's fine, you can just move them into this workspace. Or if you're starting from scratch, you'll create both of those crates within this workspace. The cool thing about this approach is that you can have a third crate in addition to your front end and back end that houses common code that can be shared between your front end and your back end. To create the workspace, we're actually just gonna run make dir. We're gonna call it full stack rust app. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy my front end and my back end crates into this workspace. I'm gonna name the directory for my backend crate backend and the directory for my frontend crate frontend. I mentioned a third crate for sharing code between the frontend and the backend. I'm gonna call that common. So I'm gonna create that now. Cargo new dash dash lib common. So now I have three crates in this workspace, frontend, backend, and common. Now let's open this in our IDE. So now you can see we have this nice workspace with three crates in it, backend, common, and frontend. And I've actually already copied over some model files from backend into common. So those can be shared in the frontend. I'll show you how to add a dependency from backend and frontend on common in a minute. Now that we have our directory structure in place, the first thing we need to do is create a cargo.toml file for the workspace. And this cargo.toml file will have one section, workspace, and it's gonna specify all the members of the workspace. We're gonna do members equals front end, back end, and common. Default members allows us to specify a crate that gets built when we run cargo build in the workspace directory. So default members, and we're gonna do back end. Okay, that's all we need to do for our workspace cargo.toml. Now let's look at some changes we might have to make on the front end side of things to accommodate this new setup. Let's add a dependency on the common crate so we can pull in those shared model structures. Now when we're developing locally, we want trunk to serve our front end so we get hot reloading, but when our front end makes requests to the back end, we want trunk to proxy those requests to Actix Web. So to do that, we'll add the proxy section in the trunk.toml file. Trunk.toml proxy, and then we say backend is. So now any API requests our front end makes will be proxied to Actix Web, which will also be running locally. Before we test this, we also need to add a dependency on common in backend as well. Now we have two terminals and we're gonna run Actix Web in one of them in the backend directory and trunk in the other in the front end directory. So we ran Actix Web with cargo run, and in the front end crate, we're gonna run trunk serve, so we get hot reloading. Okay, let's test our web app. If you've watched previous videos, you might be familiar with this web app. Long story short, it's a task management web service, and tasks have an ID, and they can be in a certain state, and be associated with some source and result files. The flow here is we're making this request to port 8080, trunk receives that request, serves up our web application, the web application in the browser makes a, another request to the backend, trunk receives that request, and routes that to Actix Web, and then our backend makes a request to DynamoDB to get the task data, which ultimately winds up coming back to the browser. Now let's see hot reloading working here. This is a table describing some data in a task. So let's say we want to add a title above this task information. So we'll add an h1 tag here and say task view. Save the file, switch back to the browser. Just like that we get hot reloading with trunk. 
Now that we have our local development environment set up, let's start thinking about production. In production, trunk is not in the picture anymore, so we need to tell ActixWeb how to serve our HTML files. There is a way to do this with ActixWeb out of the box by setting up a service that serves your HTML file and any other files that it might request in that same directory. However, there is a crate called ActixWeb Lab that contains experimental features that haven't been added to the core Actix Web project yet. There's a module in Actix Web Lab called SPA that can help us serve up our static HTML files because that's what this is. It's a single page web application. First in the backend cargo.toml, we'll add Actix Web Lab as a dependency. And then in main.rs, we'll do use Actix Web Lab SPA. And that'll give us this nice convenience function for setting up an SPA service. So then after we define our API services, we're gonna do another service and we're gonna say SPA, which is the function that we imported, that index file, dist slash index.html, which is a path on disk to our index.html file. And then we're gonna do that static resources mount and that's the path at which Actix Web will serve up this single page web application. And then we're gonna do dot static resources location, which is the directory to find any other files that index.html might request. And then we're gonna do dot finish. The other really important thing to note is that the IP address that you bind your Actix Web app to should not be 127.0.0.1. It should actually be 0.0.0.0, which allows it to listen on any IP owned by the host. And this is actually important when we run Actix Web in a Docker container. If you specify 127.0.0.1 here, the Docker container actually won't be able to expose the Actix Web application. So now we need to create a symbolic link in the backend directory to the build output of the frontend directory so that Actix Web can serve up our static HTML files that were built by Trunk. So we're gonna do ln symbolic link dot dot slash front end dist, and then we're gonna place that in this directory. So dot slash dist, Let's see if that's there. Okay, it's there. So now we should be able to use just Actix Web to serve up our entire web application. Let's do cargo run. We should be able to go to the same URL as last time, but instead of to port 8080, we go to port 80 because that's where Actix Web is listening. So we're gonna paste the previous URL, delete the 8080, and it looks like that works. So now we're just using Actix Web. Trunk is not involved anymore. And this is the setup that we're gonna want in production. So now the only thing left to do is to package this up in a Docker image that we can easily deploy to a cloud service or somewhere else. And to do that, we're gonna to need to create a Docker file. So we'll create the Docker file in the root directory of our workspace. So the basics of Docker are outside the scope of this video, but if you want a great introduction to Docker, I'll put a link in the description below. Again, no need to watch that before watching this video, you should still be able to follow along. The way this works is that we're gonna have one Docker image for building our application and another Docker image for actually deploying it to production. So first we need to set up that build image. That build image is gonna be based on the official Rust Docker image that has all the Rust build tools pre-installed. So we're gonna do from Rust latest as build and that's gonna grab the latest official Rust Docker image, and doing as build will later allow us to refer to that image when we're copying files to our production image. Now the core Rust build tools come pre-installed in this image, but there's a few more things that we need to add. We need to add the WebAssembly target, which doesn't come on the image by default. So Rust up target add WASM32 unknown unknown, and now we need to install trunk and WASM bind gen. Now we're gonna set our working directory that we're gonna copy the files into from our local file system. And now we copy all the files in the current directory of our local system to that working directory on the Docker image. To build our front end, we're gonna CD into the front end directory and run trunk build. We're gonna specify the release flag because this is going to production. And then because backend is our default crate in the workspace, we actually don't need a CD into the backend directory. We can just run cargo build in the root of the workspace. So run cargo build and then specify dash dash release because it's production. And now our application at this point should be built. The next part of this is to set up the image that our application is actually gonna run on. And this will be based on Google's distroless image. All you need to know is that it's a hardened image that's meant for running production applications. So to grab that, we're gonna do from gcr.io slash distroless 
And now there's two build directories that we need to copy to this new image, the backend build artifacts and the front end build artifacts that came from trunk. We're gonna copy both of those to the user local bin directory on this Docker image. We're gonna specify the build image that we created up here as an image that we're copying from. And then we're gonna do user source. We're gonna specify the backend executable that's found in the target slash release directory. And again, we're copying that to user local bin on the Docker image. For the way we've set up our Actix web application, we'll expect a dist directory parallel to our backend executable. So we're gonna copy the front end build artifacts to dist in user local bin. Copy from equals build user source full stack rust front end slash dist, which is where trunk puts the build artifacts. And we're gonna copy that to user local bin dist. And before we can run our backend executable, we need to set our working directory to user local bin. And then we're gonna execute our backend executable. And that should do it for the Docker file. Made a little mistake here. Let me fix that full stack rust, not full stack. Now that our Docker file is set up, we should be able to do Docker build in our workspace root directory to build the Docker image. Docker build dash T task app. So we're gonna call the image task app and we're gonna use a Docker file in the current directory. It can actually take a bit of time to install trunk and wasm bind gen on the build image. So just watch out for that. Now that our Docker image is built, we can run it and test it locally. We should be able to navigate to our web app on port 80 in the browser and the Docker container should serve it to us. Because this web app uses DynamoDB, one thing we need to do when we run the container locally is pass in our AWS credentials so that it can communicate with DynamoDB. Behind the scenes, I've set the AWS access key ID and the AWS secret access key environment variables in my terminal. And I'm gonna pass the values of those to the Docker container when I run it. So we're gonna do docker run dash p 8080, which means port 80 on the Docker container will map to port 80 locally. And then we're gonna pass it those AWS credentials that I mentioned. So we pass in the access key ID, the secret access key, and the region. And then we pass the name of the image that we wanna create a container for, which is task app. Now we should be able to navigate to the same URL that we were before when we were running Actix Web locally. And there it is. The Docker container is serving our web app. And now we can deploy that Docker image wherever we want to deploy. If you'd like to see a video on deploying that image or maybe automating this build using something like GitHub Actions, let me know in the comments. There you have it, a full stack Rust web app packaged up and ready to deploy. Hope you all liked it and we'll see you in the next one.